Hello again, Captains. I'm your host, USS Endeavor. And no, this isn't the same video you clicked on last time. This is a brand new one, but in the same ship that we just covered. And I got to be honest, I wanted to take it out because uh, I figured maybe the first one was a fluke. Well, no, not to be undone. I uh, actually improved on my kills because uh, I was a little salty that I didn't get a Kraken on that last game. Uh, so we're going to get one this game. Um, along with a couple of other things that are kind of interesting and I'm by myself again, but, uh, I have only played this ship four times in standard and I haven't lost yet. So real briefly, we'll go over all, uh, a couple of things. We're not going to go over the full stats cause I literally just put it out and nothing has really changed. So if you want to see the full stats and everything, go check out the uh, first Anchorage video where I actually do a deep dive on it. But the commander, like I said, is the exact same. Victor Einstein have the exact same inspirations uh, with both Makawa and Mimbelli. Um, reaching out, um, the whole bearing indicator, all that stuff. Everything is still the same. Really uh, emphasizing the guns. So, <clears throat> yeah. So everything, nothing has really changed. Um, and the same thing, you have uh, a sonar along with your smoke, and you have heals, and we put on all of the epic boosters because you can really take advantage of it. Um, first mod slot is Amy Sixman's Mod 1, second is Propulsion Mod, third is the Concealment Mod, and the last one, which I still haven't changed the graphic for, and I apologize, but it is the main battery Mod 3, but it's upgraded to be the Purple Epic uh, so that it increases my reload every 30,000 damage. And there, here's the proof that I am not lying to you. I have four games in her. I haven't lost. And as you can see, my highest battle achievements in the lower right-hand corner, max ships destroyed five. Um, that's this game that you're about to see. So we're getting right into the action here on the map Trap. I'm by myself, and there are four anchorages in this game. Three on our team and one on the opposing team. Uh, and there he is right there, as you can see. Uh, domination game mode, uh, two destroyers per side, and none in the middle that uh, supported me. So um, I, just, I was going to go to Alpha, but I changed my mind, and I'm coming over here. I'm trying to kind of set up to um, potentially get an ambush on whatever's coming through Bravo. And uh, lo and behold, I do get spotted, and my bearing indicator flips to right over there. At first, I thought it w it might be the Azuma, and uh, thankfully, I wasn't too broadside, and I was able to get a quick shot at him. And we got some de decent hits on him, but uh, no fires. So, again, like I said, I thought it was the Azuma that was coming in, but Bravo's getting capped, and I looked over the island, and I'm like, he's not in the cap yet. So there is a destroyer over here. So I am going to slow down a little bit because I'm afraid that torpedoes are coming in. And there's the Kiev. And I got to be honest, this guy is the best player on the blue team. And you're about to understand why here in just a second. Not only does he not have camo, but he's bum rushing in here and uh, he's right within my sonar range. So he's permanently lit for the next at least minute and a half. And so... He's just going to keep on coming. Now, I will be honest. I was a little concerned that he was going to YOLO rush me. So I was initially going to push out there and meet him head on. But I decided to stop and go in full reverse because, like I said, I was afraid he was going to YOLO. But then I start to see the torpedoes coming in. So he dumps all of his torps. And I'm going in reverse. So none of those are going to hit me. And then he smokes up. But... I guess he's a newer player and doesn't realize that uh, he can't escape my sonar. <laughs> and so he's dumping that smoke screen. And not only are we able to take him out, but unbeknownst to him, he basically laid out a full smoke screen for me to basically come right into Bravo Cap and not be spotted by anything. The Azuma doesn't have radar. He is positioned really, really well, and he did try to support his destroyer as best he could, but yeah. So that's why I'm saying this was probably the best play for the blue team, or me specifically. <laughs> and uh, so I'm going to come right on in here, and unfortunately I kind of scrape the island as I do, because my maneuverability is not the greatest, and... That is the one downside to this ship is that the maneuverability is not, not the best. You have to plan your turns, and I kind of overcorrected a little bit. So that was on me. But because of the smoke screen, 
which I just found absolutely hilarious. I mean, he literally left it all the way up to the island. So as soon as I get up to the island, I'm going to have the island to block me. So the Azuma doesn't know that I'm making this play unless, of course, he's paying attention. He sees it now that I'm in the cap, but he can't shoot me. And uh, technically, he's outside of my uh, smoke fire penalty range, so I can even take a free shot. Um, and there we set him on fire. And now we are fully set up smack dab in the middle of the map able to just basically take all these free shots we have a destroyer on both sides on charlie and alpha which they have also successfully capped so this is like the most ideal of ideal scenarios um able to basically sit uncontested inside bravo cap um i don't think the azuma really knew that i i was in there he probably knows now but there's nothing he could do about it as we just now eclipse 30,000 damage and we get uh, the first boost to our reload, which is going to help. And that is something that is noticeable uh, in this ship. Not only is the reload already pretty good with 12 guns at tier 7, which is basically the buffalo with a slightly slower reload, uh, but you also get the smoke screen. They hit just as hard as the buffalo does, um, but... It's tier 7, so it's a tier lower. Plus, you get the torpedoes, the smoke, the hydro. You just don't have a radar. But to be honest, this ship isn't designed for that. Um, it can't have that, to be perfectly honest. Now, now this is kind of interesting. I don't know if any of you guys have experienced this, but um, in a cruiser at, what, over 13 kilometer? Is that a 13 kilometer? No, it's 11 kilometers away. But still, I get a... Um, I get a fire. He's slowing down. I switch to AP, and I track these shots in, but I don't think I've ever gotten a Citadel on a broadside Scharnhorst in a cruiser before from that far out with 203s. The pennant, I, I, don't, I think I just got a little lucky, to be perfectly honest, but that was a blind fire shot, and look, I got 10 hits with a blind fire hit in this, in this thing, so... Uh, I take another one because I'm like, man, that was really easy. And then uh, and then I kind of I whiff and I miss. So this is another downside to uh, to the smoke screen uh, is that if you don't have spots, then you're not going to be able to shoot anything. Well, duh, that's kind of obvious. But hey, there are players of all different stages in this game. And so you just never know. Um, but anyway, this Azuma has finally abandoned Bravo and determined that it's just not worth it anymore. Very quickly, these ships are about to start to disappear on the Reds uh, by yours truly. We've got one kill right now, and that was the Destroyer. And this Azuma is pushing out broadside, and this is just way too good to pass up. And these shells are so devastating against broadside targets, and that is how it's done. Oh, man, that was so funny. And then another ship goes down. And so we're going to go ahead and push on out here because the Sharnhorst has... Um, more to deal with than just me and so i am getting a little bold here uh not really what the play that you want to make but you know um i'm seeing i'm kind of seeing the writing on the wall as you can see all the um the score is very lopsided in our favor and uh taking all the caps and now we're just whittling down these ships pretty good and oh gosh this ap just hits so hard and there we get shots coming from the left-hand side. And right as that happens, the enemy anchorage is now broadside to me. I'm telling you, man, now I understand what Aaron's talking about when he's talking about paid actors. Because I think, I think these guys wanted me to have a good game. As uh, you can see, we get three citadels against the anchorage. A little anchorage on anchorage action. And um, I did switch to HE briefly, but then I switched back to AP knowing he had to turn back out. But it didn't matter because we got two more and take him off the board. So the anchorage is very susceptible even to itself if you stay broadside to it. But angled correctly, this thing is a menace. Now we finally get our, um, our smoke back, and I don't like being broadside to the Sharnhorst. Or, well, the Atlanta, I, I care less about out there. But look at how low both of them are. And uh, so we're going to go ahead and take a really long-range shot out to this Atlanta way out there. And I was trying to get the other guns to shoot at the Sharnhorst right now, but it's just not quite there. Those shells look like they're really good as long as nobody kills them. We get them, and then we shoot the back turrets. The Sharnhorst is really low. 
and what do you know it, we get a double strike and the Kraken, <laughs> which uh, I'll be honest was a little lucky, but uh, I'll definitely take it. And I'm thinking, wow, there's two ships left, but unfortunately the score reaches a thousand. Ah, I just miss out. I hate it. Sometimes I kind of wish that the uh, our ships would kind of die a little bit to extend the game and let me have an even better game. But that was still really good. Just shy of another million uh, credits. So if you need a credit earner, the Anchorage is definitely capable of doing that. Again, five kills, a little over 3,200 base XP. Not quite the 3,700 base XP as the game before, but still very strong. And... Um, you know the uh the double strike and the kraken um was pretty pretty fun too so there's a look at the anchorage yet again um if i haven't said it before i'll say it again uh this ship is awfully strong so uh i don't know if i'm going to be pumping out any more of these but if uh if i keep getting the paid actors in the games that i'm getting then wow why not and maybe i need to tone it down because i have a feeling that uh war gaming is going to see these and go you know what we released the Anchorage a little too strong, and uh, we're going to have to tone it down a little bit. I hope they don't do that, but I keep pumping out games like this, then uh, they're going to take notice of it. So I might uh, put it in, I, I might leave it in dry dock for a little bit and take something else out for a change. But there you go, Captains. Thank you again for tuning in. Like, share, subscribe, comment below. Fair winds and fair seas, Captains. Uh, thank you again for tuning in. This is USS Endeavor, signing off.